Today, we're gonna to be setting up this FX5U CPU to control this Mitsubishi E800 inverter. Here's my setup. I have obviously my FX5U CPU connected to an ethernet switch. On the other side, I have my PC connected through this cable. We're gonna be running another ethernet cable to connect to the E800 series inverter. And then we're gonna be setting up the parameters both on the inverter and on the FX5U to allow them to communicate over CC link IE field basic. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is set up the parameters on our inverter. You want to make sure your inverter is in PU mode, that stands for parameter unit, that will allow us to set the parameters using the buttons on the face of the unit. Note that this is an E800E series inverter. You can see this is the part number this E in the EPA stands for Ethernet, allowing this module to be controlled via Ethernet. To set the parameters, I'm gonna press the mode button to get to this parameter set screen. And the first parameter that we need to set is parameter 1429. So let's hold the up button until we get to 1429. So this parameter sets the communication mode of the inverter. Hit set. And the default value is set for this to communicate over CC link, i.e. TSN. We're gonna to need to change it to a different number to allow it to communicate over CC link, i.e. field basic. The number that we want is 61450. There's only a few allowed options. So just hit the up button twice. We get to 61450 for CC link, i.e. field basic and press set. Okay, it's flashing, letting us know it's set to that value. Set again will allow us to increment the parameter. Next parameter, 1434 through 1437 sets the IP address of our inverter. So 1434, you can view the value here. It's set at 192. This is the first octet of our IP address. We're gonna leave it at that. 168 is the second octet. 1436 is the next octet. That is set at 50. Now, in order to communicate with our CPU over here, they're gonna to need to be on the same network. So we're gonna set this to the dot three network. So, so far 192, 168, three. Okay, flashing, let us know we set it. And then the last one is set to a default of one. That'll work for us. So IP address, we just set to 192.168.3.1. And then finally, we need to set up the IP address of the device that's going to be controlling or sending ethernet commands to this inverter. And that is going to be parameter 1449-1452. Fourteen forty nine. we can see is set at zero. So by default, these will all be zeros, meaning it will not accept ethernet commands from any source. We want it to be set up to the IP address of this CPU module, which is going to be 192.168.3.250. Set, flashing, letting us know we've set it. And next parameter, one into 168, three, and then 250 which happens to be the default IP address of the FX5 UCPU. Okay, our parameters are all set. We first set the communication mode of the inverter. We then set 
the IP address of the inverter, and then we set the ethernet command source IP address, which is the same IP address as our FX5 U CPU. Um, the numbers look like they're cycling here. I think that's just an effect of my camera's frame rate. This is supposed to be solid. Okay, now that we've set those parameters, the next thing we need to do, and this is very important, is power cycle the whole system, power cycle the inverter, so that these parameters take into effect. They're not applied immediately when they're set. You have to power cycle before they will come into effect. So we're going to turn off power. While the power is off, this is a convenient time to remove the front cover and connect the ethernet cable. This screw here will allow you to remove the front cover. On the front here, we can see two ethernet ports for an RJ45 connector. Grab my ethernet cord here. And connect it to either of the ports. And then we'll connect the other side to our switch, which you're using here. You may connect it directly to your FX5 UCPU or an ethernet module. Um, we're gonna be running through a switch today so that I can program and monitor it uh, without having to, from my PC, without having to disconnect anything. For safety, we should always replace this front cover. whenever we have the inverter powered on. Okay, and then we're going to turn the power back on. Okay. Now we are all ready to program the CPU module. So let's switch over to the PC. What I want to do is open up Melsoft GX Works 3 and start a new project. In our new project, we'll open up parameter, open up FX5 new CPU, and open up module parameter. We're looking for Ethernet port. Let's set up the IP address of our FX5U CPU. We're going to use the default 192.168.3.250 and the subnet mask we'll leave at 255.255.255.0. Next, to use or not to use CCLink IE field basic setting, that is the question, we're going to use it. Set up our network configuration settings Okay, so in this screen, what we're looking to do is add on the FRE800 inverter. If you do not see in your module list on the right, if you do not see the FRE800 inverter, then you'll need to register the inverter's profile. To do that, you're going to close your project. We will go ahead and discard the changes we made. Go to Tool, Profile Management. Register. Now you'll need to download this CSPP file for the FRE800 inverter. You can find this online and we'll post a link to it as well. Register the profile. It'll tell you it's complete. And now we can get back into our project. Open up your project if you saved it or a new one. We didn't get far. Again, parameter, FX5U CPU, module parameter, Ethernet port. Okay, I'm going to set up the IP address again of the FX5 UCPU, 192.168.3.250, and then the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. To use or not to use CC Link IE Field Basic, we want to use it. Network configuration settings. Now, you should have the FRE800 available if you didn't before. I'm going to drag and drop it next to our host station here. We're going to see up in this table that we have now an FRE800, and we should confirm that the IP address is the same as the one we set before, 192.168.3.1. Everything looks good. Okay, we're going to close with reflecting the setting. Click yes, and our next setting is the refresh setting. So this is how we're going to sync the registers from the FX5U CPU with the FRE800 inverter. 
So it's going to want us to set up starting addresses for each of these devices, remote X, remote Y, remote W read, remote W write. Okay, so we're going to set specify device. Now you can use any of these registers. We're going to use X here. The most important thing is this doesn't conflict with any other uh, currently used addresses. So we'll use X for the remote X, and we'll start it at 100 to avoid conflicting with the inputs that uh, exist on the FX5U CPU module. For remote Y, we'll use Y starting at 100. And then for these, we'll go ahead and use D. We'll start it at 1000. And why don't we start this at 2000? Now you can see this takes up the row X, row input takes up 64 points. But you may notice that this doesn't add up to 164, it's actually 177. The FX5 UCPU for its input and outputs, it uses an octal numbering system, uh, meaning that each number only goes up to a maximum of 7. So in octal, this actually is 77 is the same as 64 in decimal notation. Um, for the D register, um, that limitation doesn't apply. So 32 points from 1000 to 1031, 32 points from 2000 to 2031. Okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and check. No error was found. We set everything up correctly. And the most important thing, apply. This will not go into effect if you do not apply. All right. We can go ahead and close out of this or switch back to our main tab here. Next thing we need to do is convert the program. Now I have set up some device comments so we can tell what's going on in this program. Just to walk you through what everything does, we'll go ahead and watch. So for example, I have these watch windows set up. with each of the inputs and outputs that we'll be looking at today. So to get this settings to apply to the FX5 CPU, we need to convert and then write the program. Okay, it's asking us to reset the CPU. So we'll go ahead and flip the switch on the CPU real quick. Now, instead of writing um, a control scheme that you're not going to use, we're just going to use the watch windows to show you the effect that each input and output has. So we'll go ahead to go online. Uh, sorry, we'll just start watching. Okay, so we have currently input 32. We started at 100, so it's 132. If you started at 0, it would be 0, 32. If you started at 1,000, it would be 1,032. But input 32 is the error status flag. So there is an error, and if I look over at the inverter, I can see that there's an error displayed on the monitor screen. To reset this error, we can set this Y132, which is the reset request flag. So if we toggle this on, we should see the error clear. I heard the inverter click, and when I look back, there's no error. It is showing me that the speed is set at zero. Okay, so here is our list of settings for the inverter. We have forward rotation command at zero, zero, reverse at zero, one, uh, high speed operation command. This is just a flag that sets whether high, medium, or low speed uh, for 102, 103, 104. We have output stop. Frequency setting, I'll show you how to use these. Uh, and then the register where you can set the actual frequency of the inverter. And then on this side, we have the corresponding flags telling you uh, that each of those commands has been received. So how do we do this? Let's try setting our forward rotation command to on. We can see that forward running turned on, that running turned on, and finally up to frequency turned on. You may have noticed that our monitor value here, which is a speed, increased from 0 to 6,000. This is the frequency of the inverter in hertz, well, in 1 100th of hertz. So 6,000 corresponds to 60 hertz. 
If we turn off our report rotation command, we'll see the opposite happen. Forward running will turn off, up to frequency will turn off, and this will decrease down to zero. Let's try it. There we go. And we are no longer running. Okay, let's turn it back on. What happens if we set forward and reverse at the same time? We lose speed, returning down to zero, and we are not running. So if you have both forward and reverse on at the same time, uh, it is the same as having neither. We'll go ahead and turn off the forward command. So the reverse command now only is on. And we can see we're running in reverse up to frequency with header speed. Great. What if we want to run at a speed other than 60 hertz? We need to set our frequency in this register. So let's say I want to run at a speed of 50 hertz. That would be 5,000 because it's in one one hundredth of hertz units. And then we need to set this frequency. It's even though it's set in here, it hasn't taken effect yet. It hasn't been saved as the set speed for the inverter. So if we turn it on, for example, this will still run up to 6,000 instead of 5,000. So what we need to do is set the set command flag. And then this will, the value in this register will be set on the inverter. We can choose whether we want to store it in the RAM or the RAM and the EEPROM. The difference is if you store it in the RAM, this value will not be present on your next power cycle. If we store it in EEPROM, then it will. Manual warns that if you're frequently changing the set frequency, you should not save it to EEPROM. You should only save it to RAM. So that's what we'll go ahead and do. We have 5,000 set in here. If we toggle this on, we can see that the frequency setting is complete and we'll take it back off. Now, when we command to run forward or reverse, we should see that our speed will only reach 5,000 or 50 hertz, and it did. And lastly, we'll take a look at output stop. We've seen this speed go smoothly from zero to 6,000 or zero to 5,000 and smoothly back down with gradual acceleration and deceleration. If we turn on the output stop flag, we should see this cut off immediately back to zero. There we go. Immediately back to zero. Not running anymore. If we turn off output stop, it will not immediately jump back to 5,000. We'll have to regain our speed. And it'll accelerate smoothly. So this would be good for uh, kind of an emergency stop situation. Let's try it again. We'll toggle it on and you'll see your speed drop immediately. Output cutoff. All right, I'm gonna turn off the forward rotation flag, turn off this flag. So now we've seen how to use the most basic settings to communicate with our EA100 inverter over CC Link IE Field Basic. The next thing you can do instead of monitoring these values and toggling them manually is we can write a program, which I will leave to do for your application. Thank you for watching.